Good morning. So glad to see you again by the chairside chat. Wanted to share a scripture passage with you today after reading my one year Bible and then thinking about which passage I wanted to use. Um, came across a longer passage today, so it's going to take me a little longer to read it to you. <clears throat> this is from Luke chapter 4, verses 23 through 30. It says, Then Jesus said, You will undoubtedly quote me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself, meaning do your miracles here in your hometown like you did those in Capernaum. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Certainly there were many needy widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the heavens were closed for three and a half years and a severe famine devastated the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them. He was sent instead to a foreigner, a widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. And many in Israel had leprosy in the time of the prophet Elisha, but the only one healed was Naaman, a Syrian. When they heard this, the people in the synagogue were furious. Jumping up, they mobbed him and forced him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built. They intended to push him over the cliff, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. Now, Jesus is reading from Isaiah, and he's reading in the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth. And as he's reading this passage, he quotes this section, which is a messianic prophecy that says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then there in the hearing of all these people, he says, this has been fulfilled in your midst today. And the people's reaction was, they spoke well of him. Now think about that. Think about that for just a moment. Jesus has just announced, I'm the Messiah. He's proclaimed this messianic announcement, this proclamation. And the people say, that's really nice. And they speak well of him. It wasn't until Jesus said that he wasn't going to do anything special for them. I'm not going to be at your beck and call. You can't just ask me to do special things just because I'm from Nazareth. In fact, people in my hometown think they know me, but they don't know really who I am. It was then that the people got angry at him. They got mad because Jesus said, I'm not going to give you any special preferential treatment. And then they dragged him to the edge of the town, hoping to throw him over and mob him because he wouldn't do what they wanted him to do. And you know, that made me stop and think for just a moment. How often am I like that crowd? Oh yeah, I listen to Jesus, I follow Jesus, I speak well of Jesus. But when he doesn't do what I want him to do, do I turn on him too? Well, I'd like to think my relationship with Jesus isn't that way. I hope it's not that way. This passage made me stop and think. Maybe I'm more like that crowd than I really want to admit. Maybe there are times when Jesus doesn't do what I want him to do. And in my heart, I start to turn on him too. Friends, Jesus isn't here to serve us not to do what we ask him to do all the time. We're here to serve him. Let me pray for you. God, thank you, thank you for your love and your mercy. And Jesus, while we know that you did take on the form of a servant, you served as you saw fit, not as we saw fit. And there are times, Lord, I confess, when I ask you to do things and maybe you don't answer those prayers or you don't answer them the way that I want you to answer them. I confess there are times when I get disheartened and maybe I don't turn on you 
in the sense that this crowd turned and mobbed you, but at times I'm tempted to turn at least some of my faith from you. So Lord, I pray that you would help us to remain firm and reign, remain strong in our faith and trust in you. Even when you may not do exactly what we ask you to do. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your love and your mercy. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends. See you tomorrow morning.